Well, after an hour on the feeder, apart from that one I lost more or less first chuck, it's very quiet. So what I'm going to do now, I've been feeding the waggler line. The guy on the little pier over there, he's had three or four carp. So whatever bait he's using seems to be the one for today. And I'm going out on a four mil banded pellet. As you can see, what I do is I put the pellet right up the back of the hook so that it keeps the hook point clear. As I say, I've clipped up with the waggler, so I'll cast it as hard as I can. It'll hit the clip, everything will be straight. Oh, that was an awful cast. I'll try again and do it properly. That's it, hit the clip. And then what I do is read it a couple of yards that I went too far, now that's right over the bait. See if this does any better than the wag, uh, than the feeder. Should be a few fish there, I would have thought. What I'll do with the uh, feeder in a while, I'll go back out there, but I'll use a little hybrid feeder and a much smaller hook bait. I'll use one of these four millimeter pellets because sometimes, especially as we change from summer to autumn to winter, the bigger baits aren't as effective. Though saying that, I can actually see the bait, the anglers chucking out the other side of those lily pads, so it must be fairly sizable. It looks like a big chunk of paste or something, I don't know quite what it is, but it's fairly substantial. We just had a little tidy knot made on the waggler. I've got some six mil soft pellets as well to try on the waggler, so we'll give it a go with this four mil for a minute or two. Another little touch then. stuck in the coat so hopefully you'll get a you get the picture of the lake and not the coat. Put a few pellet out there. doesn't matter if it goes a bit beyond the waggler line because I can, unlike the pole, it's very easy to just cast that little bit further and uh, get into the feed. That's it, hit the clip, a couple of turns, sink the line. surprised for such a warm day, and it was quite a warm night, that the fish are quite so tricky today. Fish in the angler are about 20 metres. sitting there nicely, that pellet should be just touching bottom.
when you waggle a fish, you'd always remember to go a couple of float sizes higher than you think you'll need. Because if the weather changes, the wind changes, or you know it starts to blow into you, you'll find you struggle to, to get your distance. So if you shot it properly, it won't matter if it's a, it's a heavier float than you think you need, as long as you've just got enough tip showing to see the bites. A few little roach chucking themselves about out there. Surprisingly quiet. Put the bait out there again. It's just the shallow end of the lake, shallower. There isn't a great deal of difference, probably about a foot from the car park to here, but this is definitely the shallow end. Fish is harder in the winter because of that lack of depth. You really do need features if you're in a swim like this. In the winter, you'd fish to these little lily pad type things to my right, where there could be a perch and a few other little fish lurking about, but uh, generally the bream and the carp do tend to migrate to the deeper water. But this time of year, I mean, we're still into, especially at the moment, that was a lovely bite, we got him. Um, it's a bream, I think. Yeah, you, you do find that they do tend to migrate into the deeper water. Yeah, that's a bream. Always tell with a bream, they come to the surface and that's pretty much it. Bronze bream. About a pound, just over. Bottom, bottom lip. So picked it up off the bottom. There's the four mil banded pellet. Just did his gob. Just use the disgorger because it's easier. That's it. Been hit by a cormorant. We haven't got any pike in here, so uh, he was the one that got away. Don't forget, when you catch bream, get all the slime off your, your line before you go out again, or you won't get another bite. We're all right there, we're fairly clear. Tell it's good. We'll go back out again. Hit the clip. A little bit of grub out there.
good head of bream in here. It's a very good bream water. They, they go from small skimmers of ounces up to about three pounds. But a very good head of them, you know, it's on a good day you can certainly catch 12, 15 bream, which in any lake is a good, you know, good session. Funnily enough, in the last competition, you can always tell if you if you catch the little skimmers quite regular, you won't catch the big ones. It's it's funny like that. Or you'll come here and your first fish will be two pounds. You'll be okay. They'll all be reasonable sized fish. But it's a thing that's unique to this lake. If you're catching the small skimmers up to about six, seven ounces, you very rarely see the bigger fish. Unlike most waters like my canal at Hive, you know, you start off with the small skimmers normally and then you get the larger ones when they find the, the grub and set on it. So all, all places are a little bit different, they've all got their little quirks. Floats just moved into that darker water, still see it okay but Recast, put it in the lighter water, easier to see. Mine's still not sunk completely, you really want it to sink. I should have put a bit of washing up liquid on it, really. help it sink quickly. We're all right though, we're still inside the area where I've been putting a few pellets. Nice bite, missed it. It's okay. Another not great cast, didn't hit the clip that time. So we'll have that in and try again. It's just that little bit of wind's got up. That's better, that hit the clip. bit of bait out there. there on the float. That's better, we got him. Oh, I think, yeah, that's another bream. See the way they come, because it's so shallow here, the way they come straight to the surface. And it is literally like <laughs> really in a wet sack. But when you think we're probably in only 20 inches of water, a fish with the shape of a bream hasn't got a lot of choice really. <laughs> <laughs> 